Okay, so in the bag, we got a couple things here. So we got the module, we have the main ignition harness, which is the big fat wires, and then we have our secondary harness as well as the uh, TPMS um, interrupt wire, which it comes with all of them, but if your vehicle's not equipped with, with the tire pressure monitor system, then you do not need to do the interrupt, but um, it's here if you don't use it set it aside or whatever and then you know we got some yeah let's just open this up real quick if i can with one hand okay so we got a uh, little card with all of our info phone number website um all of our stuff on here and then on the back there's some other stuff too uh we got a warning decal that you can stick under the hood if you want to it just basically warns uh mechanics and whatnot that there's a remote start on the system uh on the truck if you know if they need to deactivate it before servicing and then we got an alcohol pad that basically just prep the surface for the sticker like i said again module um our harness second harness uh tpms interrupt and then we got some instructions here too so okay first thing we're gonna do um how i usually do this i start with the uh, uh main harness here this is the factory connector that i unplugged so i'm gonna plug it into uh the mating connector okay and then we got the replacement that goes up here i can get that in there so plug it in okay and then we got that and then this um there's plenty of slack right here to zip tie it up um, but I'm gonna show you, just open this up, open that up, and then we pop it in. It, it matches with all the factory wiring. I'm gonna put a zip tie around that since I broke it and it's freaking cold. That one clips back in as you heard it. And then just route it over to the left here. Um, there's one loose wire which is a black wire that goes to chassis ground and I will show you where to put that um, shortly. So um, from this point, you can zip tie this puppy. Uh, there's a good solid harness right here. You can zip tie that too. Just make sure you position this in a way um, and it's not tight. So when you telescope the steering wheel back and forth um, that it has enough slack to move with the steering wheel. It doesn't move, but a couple inches. So. Um, I usually just leave some slack here and it's not it's not big deal at all. Okay, so secondary harness We got two adapters. We got the OBD2 Then we got the BCM which I talked about earlier So the BCM harness I usually start with it goes right back in here So I already unplugged it as you saw earlier. So basically plug the factory connector into here now make sure that there are no bent pins in here. These are super fragile OEM pins you need to be careful of. Uh, don't force it. So as you see, it slides right in and then you'll you'll hear it click. So we're good there. Now this end, plug right back into the BCM. You'll hear that click too, okay? Um, the next one we need to route is the OBD2 connector which goes down here that we pulled out of the airbag mount. You basically put the old uh, factory one into the mating connector and then the white one that looks just like the factory one you poke down in here oops if you can put it the right way and it will audibly click so um, here again just zip tie it there's lots of uh, slack on the harness um, and then what's left is you got three connectors here you got a big white one, a medium white one, and a small white one. I know, super technical terms, right? Okay, so these plug into the module, which I'm gonna go grab um, and then show you the programming process. One thing I forgot to show you guys, um, the loose black wire that comes off of our main harness here. Um, there's two grounding points up here. You can take your pick. Uh, these are both 10 millimeter bolts, so you don't have to go find another um, socket or anything, but I usually use the one on the left. Undo it, the ring terminal fits on this bolt. It's to the big freaking uh, brace here, which is chassis ground. Never had a problem with it. Um, just It's right here where your BCM connector is at, so you don't have to tear anything else back apart. And then um, we're going to program the module here in a second. 
and then I'm gonna show you where to put the uh, the interrupt wire that's down here in the kick panel and then how to prep it so okay so the programming process for this I got the module there's a little button right here so you're gonna push and hold it insert the big ignition wire harness the lights are gonna fluctuate if you can see uh, blue red yellow and then it's gonna go blue and red at the same time you want to release the button when they're both blue and red so if you release it on any other color or you don't get it on blue and red you're gonna to have to do this step over so we got we we'll go blue red yellow blue and red release and now they stay on blue and red if you can it's hard to see it's the two outside lights so they stay blue and red what you're gonna to want to do is hook up the remaining two harnesses so you'll have your medium harness that goes right here next to the big ignition wire and then the four pin uh, or I'm sorry uh, the six pin white connector goes in the back here next to the red one so you plug that little guy in okay and now we're gonna push the program button right here ten times so you push it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and now the lights gonna flash nine times and pause and then nine times again and pause and it's gonna keep doing that okay so make sure it's nine times though count that and if not um, you need to push the button again until you get to nine so every time you push it it'll flash once so let's make sure we're there one two three four five six seven eight nine so we're good okay so now what you're going to want to do is take the key if I can find it turn the ignition on so put your key in turn it forward the lights go off and they start blinking rapidly okay and then once the blue light starts blinking like this that means the CAN bus has been programmed and you can turn the key off and now programming is complete so basically when you turn the key on the lights are gonna flash uh, then it's gonna go off and then the blue lights gonna flash and when the blue light flashes that means that the uh, data the data part of the module is programmed and you are now done man this is a freaking long ass video man I'm sorry guys so now if I push the lock button three times it's gonna start but we won't be able to unlock the vehicle while it's running because we haven't done our um, interrupt down in the kick panel but um, I'll show you that here in a second okay guys so this is the um, harness that you're going to use to do the interrupt in the kick panel uh, on the Tundra that I'm working on it's actually in the pass or I'm sorry the driver kick panel uh, some of the vehicles it's located over here in the passenger kick panel the notes will be in the install guide um, as far as the location and connector um, pin location so basically what you're going to do you're going to get this whole harness here but you only need two wires and you're going to need the uh, white red which is this far one right here and then the third one in which is white green so all the other ones just cut off and I'll show you that here in a second so the white and red white and green on the far right is your white red third one in is white green the other ones just snip off here so then we're gonna have a lot of extra cable that you guys can throw in your drawer and use for something else if you want to now what I usually do is take some electrical tape tape up those little loose connections there and then I'm going to show you two methods that you can use to twist these wires use the red one tie it right here and then you take your drill and you come back here and you put the wires in it and you can pull it a couple seconds you don't want it super tight and now your wires are nice and twisted all the way down okay so as far as these wires go um, I recommend soldering them into the vehicle in the event that you don't have a soldering iron or um, you just don't want to do it uh, we include these two little butt connectors so strip the insulation off Twist the wire up and you can fold it over to have a little bit thicker wire there and then you can insert into the butt connector and then just crimp it down and now you got a good 
solid crimp. And you'll do the same process in the vehicle. All right, guys, so now for the, the moment you've all probably been hating for. <laughs> the kick panel over here. Um, so as you know, we twisted up the white red white green wires they come over um, just route them back over and down to the kick panel here um, just kind of make sure you get it behind everything and when you bolt the dash back up nothing to get pinched um, so what you're going to want to do is down here at the very base of the kick panel you're going to find a blue connector and then a white uh, 20 pin connector which is right here next to it if you can see that right there so we want this one right here so press that tab, pull back on it. Um, you, you're gonna have to undo this black electrical tape. And then the interrupt wire is gonna be, uh, let me fold this over and show you guys. So this is the bottom. It's gonna be right there next to the big fat blue one, uh, right here. It's pink on this connector. It may be red, it may be another color in your truck depending on the trim level and what your um, truck's equipped with as far as electronics and whatnot but it's always gonna be that second pin in. So on this one, it's between the blue one and the yellow. It's pink on this truck, like I said. It might be different on yours, but you always wanna do the second um, pin in. And we're gonna cut that wire, and I'll show you which side goes where here in a second. All right, guys, so you got two wires down here, obviously. You got your white red and then white green. White red is gonna go uh, right here on the connector side, like this. Or if you're soldering, solder it there. White green goes over here to the car side. So what I did was I stripped the insulation. Let me turn the light on. I stripped the insulation back on here and folded the wire over to give it a little more uh, thickness so it'll crimp good. But like I said, I recommend soldering. But white red goes to connector side, white green goes to vehicle side. So crimp those. This is gonna let your remote work after the uh, vehicle is remote started. If you don't do this, your truck will still start. You just won't be able to unlock the doors um, with the key fob. Okay guys, so I got everything installed. Uh, the shit is not back together yet. I wanted to demo this. Um, I highly encourage you to test the remote start and all functions before reassembling the vehicle uh, in case maybe you didn't get something plugged in all the way or something just didn't take. Um, that way you don't have to take your truck back apart. And also I'm installing our phone module which will let the customer use the phone app to um, basically lock, unlock, GPS, locate, and start the vehicle. Uh, so I still have to do that, but I wanted to show you guys this. So um, the vehicle's locked right now. Um, it will remain locked during remote start since you're pushing the lock button So how this works is you push lock button three times So we're gonna hit lock 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 the lights are gonna blink um, You'll hear the Toyota beep the truck will unlock um, to disarm the factory alarm prior to cranking the engine and then about five seconds after it's running, it will relock the door. So the truck remains locked the entire time it's remote started. You'll walk up, you'll push unlock, you can open the door, the truck stays running, you get in, put the key forward, and you can just drive off. So um, unlike the push button starts, this one will not turn off with the door closed. So here we go. So we're gonna hit lock, lock, lock. So as you can see up front, the parking lights are illuminated uh, front and rear. Uh, the doors, like I said, about three to five seconds after it started um, will be locked. And now you can hit the unlock button and you can get in. Obviously we're still, the, car, the truck's still running. Uh, something to note is if you do the interrupt in the driver's kick panel or for the TPMS, your TPMS light is going to flash during remote start. Uh, that's because we did the interrupt, uh, which allows the factory key to operate remote start, um, or I'm sorry, locks during remote start. But when you do, when you put do the key takeover, hold on a second. So you put the key in, two clicks, one, two, and now when you push the brake, 
to pull it out of park. It disengages the remote start and then your light goes off. So that is normal for it to flash during remote start, but as soon as you do the key takeover, it will go away. And then turn the key off and you're good to go. So um, again, lock, lock, lock. You'll hear the door unlock, so it's unlocked right now. And then about three to five seconds after it starts, the door will lock. So it's basically if you have an OEM alarm, um, it disables the alarm and then reactivates it after it's running. And then it's locked. Push the unlock, you'll see parking lights flash, and then you can enter the vehicle. So super awesome, super convenient. And if you guys have any questions, holler at me. Uh, all the info is down there in the description. And again, this is an 18 Tundra. The guy drove from Houston. Uh, this is a 